Hello and welcome to Florian Models Live. Here we are on Friday the 24th of April 2020. After it has been quite an eventful day, shall we say the least, but we'll be on to that in a moment. First of all, I do have to thank um, Pramjit for being on last night. Absolute star as always, as I say, for somebody who's of younger years. And I hate it because I remember when I was his age and people would say, little whippersnapper like you and you're like, hey. but I feel like it now. But he is an incredible guy. Uh, he's very, very talented. Um, and yes, he comes across very, very well doing it all and all, everything else like that. And he's going to be big, I think, in the hobby in years to come. I reckon he'll become like the CEO of like Airfix <laughs> when they branch back. away again and go on their own, which is, yeah. <laughs> so yes, but no, very, very, but thank you for all the kind feedback on that. Obviously, that's all down to uh, Pramjit. As I say, he'll come on as much as he can, really. I think he quite enjoys it now. He's in the groove with it all, so he's nice and relaxed. But as I say, it's great for him to answer your questions directly and stuff like that. We were talking earlier, maybe we'll try and get some other people in the industry um, and do some interviews with them. But I think that'll probably happen when the world returns to normal, which mm. can't come soon enough. So anyway, because <laughs> we'll get this out of the way and then we'll go on to very nice things. So um, from my point of view, this isn't PM's point of view. This is my point of view only. Flory Model Store is closing as of Saturday night. Now, the reason that I've taken the decision to do this is purely because I have spent all day, I kid you not, just answering people saying, where's my order? You know, as I say, they all come with tracking. You can track them all yourselves and they are just in the system. Um, and they are usually taking over seven days. Seven to ten days is the average of them turning up. They are all tracked. They're all on sign for, even though they just get CV19 written on these days, clearly. Okay, but honestly, it's out of my control. But I have spent all day just tr finding people's tracking trying to sort out their orders seeing where they are and everything else like that and it's time to be honest i can't one be, have to do and second be bothered messing around with all of that stuff so what i've done is i've got basically the site is got little notices all on it now and things let me get rid of that i don't know why it's saying that get out of the way uh up on my site now for the store and it basically just says up here due to delays in the post system we'll be closing the store from sunday the 26th of april uh until the postal service is back to normal uh all orders up to that date have been sent tracking will be shown and that it's in the postal system we apologize for any inconvenience it's as simple as that it's just that really i've got better things to do like this the mess around with all of that if that makes sense so i know it's a bit of a, a blow and if you are planning on putting in an order all i say is do it now um, and then whenever the postal system gets back to normal i'll quite happily open the store again and we'll carry on just like that it's just at the moment the only other option is to stick it on a courier and that's going to be anything between 10 and 15 pounds per order to send in the uk god knows what it'll be for abroad and that's no guarantee either because couriers are getting them when they can. You know, at the end of the day, I think people just need to understand that post office is manned by people who are getting ill and obviously they're at maximum capacity. And I think, to be honest, the mail order system is probably swamped because everybody's doing things mail order as well. So not only are they getting more stuff through, it's probably like Christmas for them, uh, you know, as they're getting ill as well and can't through. But again, from my point of view, I just haven't got the time to mess around chasing up stuff all day long. So I'm going to shut the Florian Model Store uh, to all orders and we'll go from there. That's basically it in a nutshell from my side. That doesn't include PM. PM's its own entity, as we know. It's two separate companies. That will carry on uh, and you can get all your bits and pieces out of them uh, and things like that. So, but from my side of it, it's just pants. So, yes. <laughs> And I've just had one of them days really to hear with it all. And if I had one more thing, and to be honest, as we sat here with the guys for now, I've still got people messaging me all the time saying, where's my order? And it's like, I am not going to put up with that for the next few weeks of chasing up stuff like that and just wasting my time trying to find where it is, where we all know where it is. It's just in the system, you know, but I think people really have to understand that this is not normal times. Things are happening. It's not like we're not sending it. 
it is it's going out every two days it goes out okay we're not doing it every day because again we're supposed to be self-isolating so we've been doing orders mondays wednesdays and fridays but they are always bang up to date as soon as they're in you know they will go out on the next day or you know if it's on the same day it turns up they go out the same day so that's what we've been doing so yes so that's my little thing done so i can be a modeler or i might just go on holiday next week i haven't decided yet <laughs> also from rumors around is that the said postal services aren't taking extra any extra staff on right and also they're not paying overtime to their own staff so nothing extra there's no extra in the system to help with yeah. the demand and there's people off sick as well so yeah, yeah. oh i know that because i spoke to our post lady yesterday hmm. so and she'd been off sick or self-isolating and she'd come back and i was talking to her yesterday and um <laughs> And she said the same thing. It's just like there's just loads and loads of packages, but they they're only doing sort of the the shift, if that makes sense, yeah. because they're not being paid. So why why should they work for nothing and line the CEO's pocket? Mm. I don't blame them. I absolutely don't blame them. One no, little I bit. don't either. No. Um, I mean, the man to speak to is obviously not here today, which is John, because he's a postman and he's just come back to it. But. Mm. You, you know, stuff is in. I mean, literally, I have just received this from Phil, which is a stock order, and the date on it is the 17th. So that was posted. You posted on the 16th, yeah? Yeah. Dropped yeah. it off. It's obviously gone in the system, and we're now on the 24th, and it's turned up. Yeah. You can't do anything about it. There's no nothing from it, like Phil's point of view or my point of view. I've literally been doing posting every day where I was going to do every other day, but we've been that busy that I can't do mm. that because it'd just be too much of a you know an order's coming in so i've done every day but all i'm working is in the morning because mm. obviously our post office as well shuts at to two o'clock but i need to get there before then to obviously get it in the system, in the system for them yeah. to process it, blah, blah blah so i'm only working in the morning as it is because obviously we've got daughter at home my wife's at home working on her business because she's got stuff to do so again we're kind of part-time and it's over full time work if that makes sense. Yeah, that's we have been there every day, all day, but it is what it is and we're coping and we're doing it. But um but yeah, for the postage system, there's nothing we can do. It no. it gets gone, it's posted, you know, and it turns up when it turns up, I'm afraid it's one of them, isn't it? So Yeah. It is, it is. So yes. Yeah. So that's that side of things. So Matt, yeah. over to you. <laughs> so the other side of things is what we touched on last night is obviously the postage cost from the PM side of it. Now I know some of you are being overcharged. Um, the system works on a weight, um, a weight system of it goes through and then that calculates the posting. Now that there is a flaw in that system, but it's a flaw that needs to be there because of if we are posting to certain countries or out of the UK, it means then we're not losing out on postage. It works the right postage out. So manually, what I've been doing is going through and refunding the overpayment for the postage. Mm -hmm. So I've done a load today, this morning, uh, obviously with the amount of orders coming in as well that we've had over the past, God knows how long as well. It's like, it's not sort of every day I've had to do it because I've obviously got other things to do as, you know, um, so I'm, I am trying to keep on top of it. I have done a load. If there is anybody that I have missed, please just shoot us an email. I'll look into it and, and we'll refund you badly. It's not like we're here to rip anybody off with the postage far from it. Hopefully when this is over, I'm get Andy going to come up and we're going to go through and see if we can sort it out properly. But it's just how the site works with the weight system. You know, I know it's a bit of pain, but again, it's it is what it is i think as well when we first set up the system we obviously you know you, you we put in the weights and then we work yeah. out roughly that up to a certain weight certain parcels things but again sometimes i know because matt's very much like me as well is that our postal people we do find a cheaper alternative sometimes or there's a, a courier that's cheaper sometimes than what originally yeah. it was and sometimes yeah. it goes the other way and it gets more expensive so yeah. again you always got this thing and also you get volumatic weight comes into it as well whereas i say if we can get it inside a certain box we know roughly how it is but some kits are just a little bit longer and that screws everything up uh, and various things so there's always going to be that little bit of wiggle room in there but like we've always said 
if we see it we'll do it and you know refund the difference but sometimes as I say it's very difficult and especially at the moment with Matt's point of view he's running the entire show up there on his own you know with sort of you know 30 40 orders coming in a day it's very difficult to spend and go through it all when I'm not being funny he's doing the shows here with us as well and all the bits and pieces go along with it not to mention you know doing your keep fit in the mornings I wish that worked, Matt. <laughs> <laughs> I imagine up being at work but yeah it's, I mean, we're not moaning by any stretch because this is fantastic. I want to thank everybody as well for using us mm. uh, for buying and whatever because it's been phenomenal. It's been, you know, pff, took us by, took me by surprise, you know, because I thought it would be the initial sort of load of sales and then it would sort of tail off. Yeah. And it hasn't by yeah. a long way. So just, yeah, I, I, I just want to say thank you as well for everybody for using us because, you know, it really is appreciated. Uh, yes. So don't think of it as, as we're just whining and having a moan and get on with it and man up and all that because it's not. It's just obviously there's only so many hours that we're doing stuff on my side of it especially. So I'm doing my best, so to speak. Mm. So mm. just, um, yeah, it's just weird times, that's all. So It is. We talk about every first... night, don't we? Hey. So we talk about every night about how many sales have like, come through thinking, oh my God, yeah, crikey. Mm. Can't look out, yeah. It's just yeah. yeah, it's brilliant. It's phenomenal, isn't it? Yeah. So, and I and mean, there's a load more because some stuff's arrived that's going to really get people. Well, one item is anyway that should get people properly excited. Yes. I hope anyway. So I didn't expect it. I didn't expect it to come in, but it um, it got dispatched literally yesterday, and and it got delivered today. So whoever I think it's FedEx to be honest, they must be right on the ball. They're but on the ball. To yeah. be fair, I do have a a bit of a an in with. The said company that we deal with, and, and I always get uh, urgent on my. <laughs> to be honest, so they do get done quick. So yeah, so we'll show you in a bit anyway what lots coming because there is some other stuff as well in the store. So yeah, no, yeah. but I must admit it is a bit sad to be the first time I've ever shut the store ever. Is so, it? So yeah, it's going to be, gonna be really odd because every morning I do them, even if I'm not taking them, it'll be really odd not to go down to the unit at about seven in the morning and start doing orders. And it was like, you know, God knows what I'm going to do next week. So sorry, yeah. I put my feet up. <laughs> yeah, right. So, like but, yeah, probably not. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, but very good. Go on then, show us your wares. What have we had in then? Let me put you on full screen. Oh, sorry. Oh, Hold on. Wait, wrong one. Do you want me to show you yours? Yes, please. Well, your will all be last. Right. Because <laughs> <laughs> I've got to dig it out from the bottom. So, because we was talking to, obviously, Mr. Frangit yesterday, we have got our hurricanes have come in. Yes. So they're up in the store and the Spitfires. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, I did see just now when I was in there that the Tiger Moths are sold out, so I am going to whack another order in for some more of them for next week. Yeah. That obviously must have sold off your thing. We've also Nathan. Ooh, oh, that, rotate that forward. So we see the nose. You've got to see oh, the really? long yeah. nose. No, that's right. Just rotate it. That's it. It's down, right, left. That's it. It's just because it's got the long nose and it had the glare <laughs> on it. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. I was looking at myself. But there, the sword meteors come in. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to send one of them down to fill with said other kit that I will show you now. And also, which is in a big box, ding, ding, ding. these have arrived. Very nice. So they're in. They're in the country and they're in the shop. And then everybody who's pre-ordered is going to get an uh, invoice for theirs sometime this weekend. Yes. So we'll get them out, get them boxed up and get them up, get them on to you. So, yeah, that's quite exciting. So another one of these I'll be sending down to Phil for a review. So it'll keep him busy while his shop's shut. Yeah. And the last thing, well, that's so hold on, I'll show mine first. I've got myself Ooh. another. Oh God! <laughs> <laughs> and I do intend to do it this time. That's not good up sale. And and that's mine. There we go. There you that's go. Still. That's what I was getting at the other day when somebody said you're going to do an airliner, and I'm like, well, sort of. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, oh, yeah. and I am going to build it as well. It's not just a review; that's for me to build. Oh yes, so pretty good, pretty good stuff. Yes, Mac Two. Who knew? If I'm building that, you got to do the Argosy. 
Yeah, well, that's why I thought I'd get it, because, yeah, if you're all going to tackle one, then, yeah, I will, I will have a go with the Argus. Eh? We can suffer together. <laughs> yeah, that's it. We're going to have a look in the store on the new arrivals. Hey. Okay. We're going to have a look at the, in the store on the, at the new arrivals. Oh, is that is that a shameless plug? Hold on. I've got it covered. There we go. Go on in, Andy. You can talk us through it. Uh, we have the hind in, obviously. Up <laughs> 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 In one. In one. Here we go. Lots, That's... Of pic- lots of pretty pictures up. Yes. Very nice. It's fair. We've waited a long time for a good 48th hind, haven't we? And hopefully that's a good 48th hind. Well, it's got to be better than the other option. Yes. Well, if their 72nd scale one is anything to go by, it's going to be fantastic, isn't it? Yeah, 72. Yeah. It is. And we've got the Spitfire and the Hurricane back in stock. Yeah. So there Battle we go. If they're all not about the Battle of Britain ones, there they are again. Yeah. Good kids. Very nice indeed. Are they going to uh, do their HE111, do we think? Not for this year, I don't think. Uh, they're not going to do it. Brilliant. Uh, nor the Dornier. <laughs> the or the Stuka. What about the Stuka? Is that the available? Is. The Stuka's out already, I think. They've not dropped that. Oh, uh, right. Okie doke. Well, they will uh, do, probably a couple of weeks, they'll drop it just in time yeah. for the anniversary. <laughs> but yeah, Just on, uh, uh, sorry, another front as well. Uh, we've had a big restock of Tamiya paint. Mm-hmm. So they'll be going in tomorrow back in stock as well. Um, with, to be honest, we've had a load of Tamiya kits in as well. The cars, the bikes, the aircraft, there's loads, there's loads of stuff. So, yeah, they're all starting to trickle in. See, look, you can't get the staff. That is actually 148 scale. Oh yeah, and I put that in. Sorry, it says SW forty eight. Is that close enough? That might just yeah, be the yeah. number. And get somebody off, but it is a forty eight scale kit. And he's going to edit it now as we. Sit I shall in. do it now. As we sit <laughs> you can watch live editing. Live editing. So, be interesting I'll... to see review on that. Yes. I've also had quite a few people asking, uh, message me. A few people message me about um, attacker paints, and it's just it's nothing we can do about it, is it? It's just that they're not coming from. The, the manufacturer to the supplier for us to get them in so yeah. until things start turning normal nothing can do about it yeah well yeah. until sort of poland opens back up again and the factories then you know it might start trickling but talking of attacker paint mm-hmm. Ooh, blue i've ones. got the blue line that i'm going to try yes we've got three sets of the blue line i've got the british one so i've got the um they are the military ones, but yeah, I'm going to give them a try and see how they thin, see how the airbrush, see how the brush paint, and give them a test. Yeah, so I'm quite looking forward to that. So that will keep me busy. It will be interesting to see how those go. I must admit, you'll yeah. have to do a nice little review on them. Yes, we'll do some next week. I think I'll just see if I've got some I can paint. <laughs> I, ain't really, I ain't really got a buster because I've done everything. <laughs> yeah, I see he's run out of things now. Really During bad. all this crisis, he's actually far, run out of things to do. <laughs> yeah, me. Well, actually, I tell you what, I could do. I've got a plan. I've got a cutting plan. Mm. This needs painting. Oh. Okay. Is that a firefly. No, it's an M51. I'm doing it for oh, the right. uh, South American Latin American group build. Right. It'd be what? What was the thing for? Mm-hmm. Chile. Chilean. Very nice. So, I reckon I could get away with probably doing the US paint set on it. Hmm. On. Yeah. So we'll try that and see what happens, I think. Matt, are they hand painting ones or yes. acrylic uh, hand painted ones? Are they? Yeah, the red lines. The, this. Uh, let me get the other one. That one's the airbrush one. Yeah. And the blue one's the brush painting one. But as I was talking to Phil, if we get the. Because we're on about stocking either line, aren't we? That was the plan. Yeah. I said, I'd try the blue line because then you're going to get sort of more bang for your buck because if that spray's okay, which it should do, I can't see why it won't, hmm. you've got an option then of being a brush paintable or airbrush with, you know, yeah. thin it. So, and you can thin it to what ratio you really want then, can't yes. you, as well? Because it's yeah. going to be thicker. That's yeah. our theory behind this. Bang for your buck. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so... So that was good. what I'm going to do a test on, really, just to see how it thins, how it sprays, how it brush paints, mm-hmm. and, and all that sort of thing. So, yeah. Very nice. 
exciting because because Phil's going to brush paint his DC ten. Uh, am I not? <laughs> 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 I am definitely not. I might be using car primer to do it, clearly, but uh, yes, very good. Uh, from my point of view, up with you today, you've actually got the Bristol uh, 170 Freighter Mark 21. Uh, again, typical of Fly, it's to their standard. It's got beautiful details in it, some lovely resin, but like we said before, just mind yourself, it is Fly, so it will be that limited run, as in it's going to need work you are going to have to get the filler out you are going to have to do plenty of dry fitting test fitting but again it's all there that's the beautiful thing with it and like i say in the review with it the thing with fly it gives you a beautiful static model but if you wanted to open that up you could open up the front cargo doors do the bits and pieces on the inside you could actually turn it into something a little bit special by doing some bit of scratch building into it but that would look lovely opened up you know with that forward cargo bay done so yeah it'd be very very nice and again it's quite a i think a very nice looking aircraft it's one of those sort of pioneers fixed gear that type of thing with it but it's got some great resin with it all the bits and pieces that go in there so you're going to end up with something very very nice the external details it's got a nice little bit of raised stuff it's got very fine um uh, recessed details but the plastic is a little bit yeah you know when you Ooh. feel it it's a bit textured so yeah, it's went, probably it worth to be honest it. before you actually get it glued together just give it a rub down <laughs> flat you know now, i'm not saying get out there with the old like you know 80 grit paper it's not that bad but it could do with just being polished out that's just simply say the molds aren't polished like you might find on triple a stuff it's not quite you know it's not quite this standard it's is it? not quite that standard where you need <laughs> gloves to be able to hold it but uh, yes, it uh, it's not too bad on that. Do you know what? I'm going to have to pull out the 600 wet and dry, I think, before I even start this and get a bucket of water out here and start flatting. Yeah, I think you will have to do with that one. You know, so, but actually, your, I've just had a look at, obviously, the VC-10. I've had a quick look in the V... In the v sorry, my August saying your VC-10 actually doesn't look as bad. Hmm. But you'll obviously... I'm hoping. Form your own opinion. <laughs> Yes, I'm hoping it's not going to be as bad. But yeah, I'm, I tell you what, I'll, yeah, no, the August set. Cool. How many Augusts have you owned about? Yeah, what number's this one? It's got to be four, isn't it? Three or four, I think. <laughs> so yeah, no, I'm keeping this one. Because I did have the other one, the Transport Command one, because that's the one I wanted to do. Hmm. Actually, I do quite like the... When were these used in sort of that camo scheme? When was that camo scheme used? I don't is know. Is that o Omen, is it? Omen of all right there? That'll be the sort of Aiden crisis. Aiden, that's yeah. the one. Yeah. So I do like that because it did Herx in it as well, didn't yeah, it? Yeah, that's right. I was going to say you have the Herx in that scheme as well. So, so, so you know when the news of the Herx comes out, it could be a... Oh, have a twinning. Desert camo themed... <laughs> Mind you, I think the Zvezda Herc is going to be the more modern one, isn't it? Not quite a J, but I think it's going to be the HK series or something. So, What would, what would you need for that then? Would that be a H? Uh, I think that would be one of the early ones, isn't it? So I'm not exactly sure on the Herc. I'm not very good about the older versions of them. No, I don't know. But yes. I'm sure somebody will be able to backdate it. Surely it's just engines, isn't it? From an external, it would probably just be a couple of lumps and bumps and maybe uh -huh. yeah, the uh, props on it. Yeah, because so. I know thingy do it, don't they, for the Italeri one. A company does do engines and props for yeah. the Italeri version. I can't think of the company. They do, is. and they do some nice ones because it's got the yeah. engines opened up as well. Yeah. So. Yeah. So, yes. that'd be cool. So you're not tempted to do the freighter then? Uh, actually, I'll tell you what, when I was doing it, I was thinking it would be a really nice, straightforward project to do. I would, you know, But if you were going to do it, it would be nice to have that front opened up and the kit lends itself to do it so you could open the front of that up and have it you know ramp with a car yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it looked quite cool like that i think it would look cool. proper spot on with that but uh yes hey now you've furloughed yourself crack yeah. on <laughs> oh that's it i'll just <laughs> i'll start on that in a minute i might start on the uh 2001 if i get a chance because i want to do that this afternoon but yeah. uh <laughs> yeah that's it Oh, well, that's all right. Look, you've just sold a hind. Phil's just bought a hind 24, apparently, off the site. Cool. So, yes. Thank Very you. Good. Thank you. Thank you. James says you're getting him thinking of getting his, uh, his Mac 2 Bristol Britannia out of storage. Why not? I've actually started mine. I've got 
but uh, it's not that bad a kit, James, to be honest. I did clean up all the parts and test fitted the wings, the two fuselage together and stuff, and actually, it's not too bad. It's not that bad. I think it's one of them, you just need the time to, to start to clean them up and test fit and, you know, before you even begin assembly. I was going to say, before then, you even you get know. anywhere near glue in that, it's cleaning up yeah. all the parts, isn't it? Just spending yeah. a bit of time, just with nothing in there, just test fitting things, see how it goes. And I think if yeah. you spend a good couple of hours doing that, it makes the build so much easier later on, you know? Well, I, was, I was thinking a couple of days rather well, than a yeah, couple of hours. your case you probably know. will be a couple of days. I'm hoping <laughs> it won't be. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. David says, question, when changing colours in an airbrush, do you suggest backwashing uh, with cleaner uh, into the colour cup so it bubbles and then tossing out the liquid? If not, why is this not advised? Ooh, no. This is one of those ones where historically it's probably the biggest no-no you can do. Modern airbrushes, I don't think it's as much as a problem. Um, the, the thought always was that if you're backwashing, you're putting pressure on all the seals. Um, and in the old days, I think when they were rubber, that's how you would end up really getting paint back in your trigger assembly and all the rest of it. Because when you're backwashing, the amount of air pressure going into the color cup, if you've got the lid on and that little hole couldn't expel it quicker than, because you're putting it in at say 20 PSI, it was faster than could get out the little hole in your color cup. Uh, in the top so it used to cause back pressure on the seals going back into the trigger assembly that said though a lot of people run with obviously nothing on the top so you're not causing any pressure so it's not going to go back in the seals because it just comes out of the color cup and also modern airbrushes have multiple seal systems as well and they're you know teflon or whatever they are these days in different manufacturers so i don't think it's a bigger no-no as it used to be um, but that said, old school would slap your hands for doing that. It was always seen as a big frowned upon. But the big thing is, if you've got an airbrush where you can't take the front end off quickly, if you've got an H&S, it's quicker just to whip the front out, stick a reamer through it and good to go and you know you're totally clean. But if you've got like a Procon or Iwata or something else like that where it's a nightmare to take the nozzle off, then I would backflow it. But lack of thinner straight through it and blow it out normally does the trick for me yeah it uses an h and s airbrush yeah but say h and s you can just whip the nose off and just stick a reamer in it and you'd have a totally spotlessly clean airbrush cleaner than it would be if you were trying to backflow it um but yeah what paints are you using is the on lacquer's or acrylic because mm. that that's a big factor really isn't it i think if you're on lacquer at least just blow it through just blow it through Bit of lacquer yeah. thinners in it, blow it through it, will clear it, no problem at all. But acrylics, yeah, can be a bit mm. more. But even so, when I was painting with the attacker acrylics, all I was doing was whacking a bit of airbrush cleaner and blowing it through, and then yeah. using a next color. Like Lee saying there, he's been back washing his Infinity for the last five years. Well, my first airbrush I've got over there, my Infinity, now is over 10 years old. Uh, and that's, I've never had a problem either. But again, it just depends what it is. To be honest, the Procon, it's not easy to back wash it because when you put your finger over it, you can't get a perfect seal. So yeah. <laughs> it's not like uh, the H&S ones, you can just pinch it and, and then it comes back the other way. So in some, some of them are easier to backwash than others. I know you can get those little rubber bungs that you can pop over the end to backwash them as well. But again, I think in the old days, when it was just a single little rubber O-ring, then that's a bit different. But if you're a lacquer painter, I don't think you need to backwash anyway. Certainly I don't, I just blow it through and it's good to go. But I say acrylic, it tends to gum up a little bit in the nozzle, so you might want to backwash it out. So, right, question for all of you. When was the last time you stripped your ear stand, the one you use the most, because I know you've all got more than one, and did it a deep clean? When was the last time you all did it? This morning. Liar. Liar. Seriously. <laughs> Seriously. All right, then. When was the last time before because, that you did it? Because, because I've been not. using that... Oh, right, and like an idiot, I cleaned it out with that. Oh, and I thought, <laughs> and it went to glue as it does. Yes, <laughs> so I thought I'll do, I did my main ones, then I did two others as well at the same time. 
See, with me though, I do obviously because people say to me, my airbrush isn't working and my airs flow and get running on and that. So I get them here and strip them and show it. So it's a little bit unfair. But that Procom here, this very said airbrush, I've had now for two years and I've never taken the nozzle off. I took the nozzle off when I had it brand new to do the review and that nozzle has never been off and I have never taken it apart, apart from showing you guys about going through. But for a cleaning point of view, as in a deep clean, never had it but it does only have lacquers going for it so if i spray acrylics traditional acrylics that is i use one of the evos or one of the infinities uh but for this one again classic i haven't sprayed with this now for a couple of days but the trigger is absolutely snappy yeah it just blew through some lacquers so yes good. what about you Nate? i do tend to take the nozzle off to give it a good clean I finally found a use for those do the cocktail sticks with hair at the end. Yeah. Cotton tip. They're quite good for cleaning, but I usually just take the nozzle off. I don't do like a full strip down ever, really. But sometimes just get a little reamer up the front to clean that bit. But I'm taking the back seals off and doing all that now. Nah. You know, on my Procon boy, it's fine doing it like that but for some reason my trigger's taken a while to come up honestly were you not watching when i showed you all about this if you remember i did say if you whip the back off take the internals out let me just have the on, Andy. Do, on, Andy, do it with me off. hold on <laughs> we can all do it together i've got multiple cameras up today so okay nip the chuck off whip the back off Uh, right okay you see down in there let me just yeah. go bigger screen and you put your overhead camera on right what you want to do is just see what crud is down in that hole because I've, i have cleaned it i've got a um cotton board and clean it all out right have you have you lubed it up no because let's face it you don't want to be going in there dry <laughs> yeah, but sometimes the lube gets a bit has it got a rubber seal on the top no. You got some WD forty? I'd say or a squirt of WD in there. Hang on, let me get a bit of lube. Also that rubber in was like a thin as well the rubber. Right. Also, whilst you're there, whip off your bottom and see how many threads you've got showing at the bottom to the top. So I've got roughly about two threads of that screw I think showing at the bottom. You do, you do know now everybody watching has got their airbrush out and whipping it to bits. <laughs> yeah, I've got about two threads. Makes, uh, yeah, yeah because what you can do is if you've got, uh, you know, obviously like long nose priory things, pop them in there. You can screw that up and down to adjust the spring tension because yeah. the difference between this and a proper air stem one, all this has got is a spring in it where the others have a, like a proper air stem and all the rest of it, which has got a little bit of mechanics into it, but you can screw that up and down to make it a little bit more responsive. But really it's just about the tolerances between this needle here, there's the one that drops down, isn't brilliant, it's not slack. So, and because of that, it can cause a few little issues. But literally I keep mine, because I did this literally on air a couple of weeks ago. I can't see down in the hole. Hold on. There you go. But once it's in there, it should be quite... And you see it coming out the bottom. You want it to be quite springy, springy. But honestly, just a touch of lube. So try a touch of lube in the bottom. And then a touch of lube in the top. And you should be all right. he says or, or what he could do phil is buy a new airbrush <laughs> <laughs> see also i don't know if you notice but if you look at theirs you can't really see where the seal is it doesn't yeah. seem to leave a mark where if you've got an h and s airbrush you can see exactly where the seal is because no. you always get a little mark but these, yes. and you think, this has got a filthy needle in this, because clearly I haven't cleaned it. So, hold on, where's a little bit of tissue? 
but it's it's a very good design or very good seals for it not to pinch yes they, it is yeah. and especially how long you've had yours and you know you can get away with it for a bit but then the build up on the seals or yeah you know it does you know my my h and s is always does it to be honest yeah. i can't remember the last time it didn't yeah um and some of the other ones do as well but you know i say them them ones don't seem to so there's no, obviously i don't know how they do it to be honest because this mechanism in here is a lot more simple it's only got one seal because we've got a seal set for them haven't yes. we? and it only comes yeah. with one it's not like a triple seal or something complicated uh, no, so not. but it works it, it just really really works which is very very good and don't forget if you do this and suddenly it's really you know it doesn't move don't forget it's probably because you just knock this at the back so if you unscrew it it goes and also make sure that this is screwed back in all the way because again if you've got this half hanging out you'll notice it still works but when you come to do your adjustments all up the swanny so make sure that this is done all the way back up don't over tighten it just finger tight absolutely fine okay take the needle out pop the needle in little tap nothing too heavy because you don't want to bugger the nozzle and then put it all back together and you should be all right there you go fixed is it working yeah let's hear it hiss it's bit of maintenance <laughs> come clean your airbrush with me <laughs> yeah uh, then we'll have a load of people on chat going, my airbrush don't work now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I had somebody, to be honest, one of the members, I won't say your name, but he was saying about his trigger wouldn't move. Yeah. But what it was, it was because I did say to him, have you got the twisty one? He said, no, it's all the way out. And I was like, yeah, and what it was, it was this. He hadn't put the back part, uh, this bit here. He hadn't all screwed it all the way through. He'd done a couple of turns, but he hadn't gone all yeah. the way. So consequently, the needle's yeah. pushing further out the back, banging yeah. against the housing, so nothing would go. Yeah. But uh, anyway, he did do it, and he said, "No, nah, that fixed it." Sorry. So, but it's one of those Sorry things. Up. If you don't realise, it's you know, does your head in. Oh, that is me. That's me spare part from airbrushes. That's his medical kit for his airbrush. Yeah. Hey, Andy, you got a uh, spare um, point two needle nozzle in there for a H and S. I've got one. Well, it's not good. I'm not seeing you tomorrow unless you're making a special trip up. Well, to I'm going to post it. <laughs> you're not going to post it. I've got, I've got one, but I don't know, how, I don't know how good it is. In fact, I might actually, mate. I might have one because I'm changing that point three back to a point two on mine. Oh, right. you no know, pie. This is my medical little kit, and this is what I bring up to you. You see, that's why it's in here. So I've got seal sets in there. I've got a spare mag valve. I don't know why I need one of them, but I've got pipettes and all the Rima cleaning tools, spare needle spare nozzle and i even got a depth guard for some reason so all, th all three of them are uh point twos are they new ones or no because no, i've got an habit of doing you and swapping them and putting the second anthem back in the thing and then not really you know not marking them and <laughs> got bent See, needles you can always tell my old ones because i always put tape round them oh, look. so look Mop. that's how i know brand new second you know used ones because i always put a bit of yellow tape around them just so i know that one's got three needles in it so yeah <laughs> roger asked earlier we've got the um broken boys in stock map we did have roger they've been and gone i'm going to order some more for next week because i need a restock of everything that pretty much came in with the albion alloys order what was it yesterday day before wednesday wasn't it on friday yeah it's, it's gone that's like leveling thinners or we're down to the bare bones again so i'm gonna put another order in so um and get some more in for next week and just another quick quickie one of the guys asking what you can use uh thin mr color aqueous with any of them three that's that's lacquer that's lacquer thinner that's lacquer rapid thinner and that's Aqueous's actual own thinner. But all three of them will, will thin Aqueous. Oh yeah, and also that one Matt's got, that which is the normal. straight thinner. Just a normal one. Yeah, but you can you can thin Aqueous with either lacquer thinners or their own acrylic thinners. I, I imagine you can thin it with X28 if you. Yeah, 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 X28, yeah, because that's the equivalent, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, that's, that that even smells like X28. Yeah. 
a bigger right, bottle. I've just got a question here from Clive. This is my life. Oh, my God. Was having lunchtime uh, pub meet with my colleagues while sat in the garden using uh, MS Teams. I missed the delivery uh, from my uh, Mr. Postman. The tracking shows it was from Liverton Post Office TQ12. Is that a Flory box? <laughs> yes. So what it is, it's on its way to you somewhere. It's in the system. So what happens is that we were, you obviously didn't catch the beginning of the show. So your order is in the system. So it's been scanned in. I do a scan, got me a scanner and scan it. You get sent an email saying it's now in the system. Okay, and tracking's available. Then the post office scan it at their end to say they've got it in their system. And then the next time it gets scanned these days is when it gets delivered and they write CV19 on it and, and, and CV20 and they put it into um, your post box. So that's the thing with it. Um, so yes. So again, that's what it is. I have no control over it once it's in there and orders are taking about seven to 10 days to turn up. Trust me. What's the beginning of the show? You'll hear a nice five minute rant on that particular one. Uh, the other one, which I won't have a rant about because I thought we had actually dealt with this, but um, uh, Neil was just basically saying about is, are we on YouTube chat today? Uh, and stuff like that. So obviously I do read the transcripts from the chat thing, legal requirement to do so, I hasten to add. Okay, so I went through them the other day and a few of you were, and I have spoken to the, all these people, I messaged you all about what the reasons we were using uh, YouTube uh, and stuff like that. And to be honest, I went into great depth about it, which I won't bore you completely to death with today, because we already have one rant today. But basically <laughs> we were just, we, from us four sat here prefer to use YouTube because you can pause the chat so it's easier to read so with YouTube all you do is scroll up off of the bottom and it will hold it there and it doesn't matter if a hundred people ask a question it just stays and it's perfect and works an absolute dream so when people ask questions we I just scroll to that question we talk like this I look down read out the question then we can carry on Unfortunately, as we all know, our chat, the Flory chat here, doesn't do that. So every time we're trying to read a question, it jumps. And if it's something we're talking about and you guys get really involved with it, it's almost impossible to read it. And it moves so quickly. Um, and I know the guys get really frustrated with it as much as I do. So we were just looking at different ways perhaps we could bypass using the chat room by using something else like YouTube chat or other things. My rant to this thing was, is that I've spoken to the developers about it. The developers turned around and said, we can do that for you, but you're gonna to have to pay for it. And my point is we pay for this, quite a lot of money to be honest, every year to have the chat room and all the rest of it, and a monthly fee on top of it for its upkeep and stuff like that. So I'm already paying for it, so I'm not paying for something else. Not to mention they are the same company who do the forum as well, and we're paying for them as well. Um, so from my point of view, it's a simple fix for something that's broken on the forum. Because if you go to anybody else's chat room, you can pause it apart from ours. But they, I think, got a little bit greedy. And after me sticking two fingers up to them and saying, no, I'm not paying for it, you know, they were like, well, you know, we'll get round to it at some point. So my point was, if I pay them to do it, it will become a standard thing. So everybody else who uses this form of chat room will get that perk as well but I've paid for it, so I don't think it's fair. And you guys kindly offered to pay for it. And as I said, it's nothing to do with money. It's more of a principle thing with me that we've been using this particular company now for the last 20 years. And you'd think they'd have a little bit of loyalty with us and everything else like that, but clearly not. So uh, that was my point to it. So I am actively looking at the moment to use something else because this, as far as I'm concerned, is flawed. You know and it's a pain and all it needs is a pause button and i think it'd be fine but as i say they're not willing clearly to do that at the moment so i'm thinking right easier way we'll you know use a different one and stuff like that so that's what that was about and the reasons whilst we were using youtube at the same time but i know obviously some of you got a little bit upset because you felt that we were just talking to non-members who aren't paying and clearly you guys are paying and you felt like second class citizens and all things like that which was never the case uh and you know so it was just something we were looking into and trying and seeing what it was also and the other point was it was actually a pm model show not a flooring model show and as i said PM Models is a separate entity to Flory Models and it's something me and Matt do and to be honest 
to get customers you know it, it needs customers to survive and all the rest of it and like we were saying on last night's show it needs to make money so we can invest money uh and things like that so that's what we were trying to do so that was the whole point to that one second round the, of the day the doing thing well is, uh, with, with the chat I mean, once we get onto a subject like we've been talking about airbrushes people are still asking questions so when we start talking about airbrushes then every every question then for probably about the next five ten minutes we miss hmm. all the ones that we were going to talk about because they've gone off the page. Unless you start then scrolling back up again, trying to find it, and then as soon as someone asks another question, it's like redoes it all again, and it just it is it's, it's hard work using that system, isn't it? They say it's frustrating because it's frustrating for obviously them in chat who are asking questions. Yeah, yeah we're we don't see the questions. Not, yeah. Um, yeah, and obviously they're having to then retype it or or copy and paste it and copy and paste till one of us either sees it and by that time to be fair that subject's probably been and gone mm. and we're going to moving on to something else so like you say the system's flawed because we we can't pause it and you've i mean people who watch us regularly will know like all of us have been like ah yeah stop yeah. jumping <laughs> <laughs> because it's just shot up a load of a load of chat and we're you know we're trying to find what people are asking so and it, to be honest the guys is, are talking down it, here about various platforms and stuff and to be honest we've tried discord didn't we once uh oh, what was the other thing good. we tried and that was horrendous because that killed everyone's computer i think that was discord wasn't was it? that discord, was it? discord. discord. Computer, I, yeah. I mean I, I thought about twitch hmm. i have mentioned doing it on twitch which is um but i don't know I, you know i'm no technical thing as anybody here will say but uh, you know some people do use twitch as, as another platform instead of youtube mm -hmm. which again it has a live chat on it you could you know and and basically what we're doing here but um yeah. i don't know how it works i don't know what it costs i don't know anything about twitch but again it's a i don't know it's another option i suppose but again the, the trouble also we've got is is that because the chat room is integrated into the forum, it's very easy for you guys to do it. What we don't want to do is for me to say, right, okay, well, we all go off and use things like Twitch or something yeah. else. And um, you guys, because you don't use it and don't understand it, have got to learn an entire new thing just to talk to us live here. We Ideally, yeah. we just wanted something so you, we can interact with you guys live as we do. So we can look at the chat room and it flicks along and all the rest of it. But again, it, you know, it would be simple if it had a pause button, which unfortunately it does doesn't but it's one of those ones where you know we have tested stuff in the past um, because at one point obviously Google Hangouts stopped um, I know they sort of got a new thing of it going again now but uh, and those types of things as well but again talking to a few of you about this the other day some of you don't like Google full stop um, so you know you sort of refuse to use Google products and stuff like that which is fair enough so all I was trying to do is have a situation where it's very straightforward you guys, you know, log in once. The whole point of redesigning the entire site a couple of years ago is to make it easier to log in. The payment system is now fully automated. I have nothing to do with it at all. It saves me two and a half hours a day. It's great. Okay, so from that point of view, it's more streamlined. It's more straightforward. It's just one click away. I don't want to be in a situation where if you want to go and like watch us, you have to click a different thing to get involved with it and, you know, or start up a secondary program. Also, you know and i know i can speak for the guys as well at the moment we basically run this via skype i've got something a little bit more going on in here admittedly but if we've got us having to run secondary programs it will affect the resolution of the cameras because there's only so much bandwidth being banged back and forth and amazingly today we're all crystal clear which i don't understand because mm -hmm. normally one of us is 8-bit but it's one of those ones where it's you know here it, it seems easy fix but it's not when you take into account you know two and a half thousand members all trying to get onto a secondary system and come in and do that it's got to be straightforward fluid one and done you know but as i say it's just from my point of view call me stubborn but i'm not paying them a good chunk of money and it is a good chunk of money to put a pause button in when i think it's something that it should be standard you know they've done it for other things for us before like a go to the top button was my idea no problem the live chat thing down the bottom was always my thing as well no problem at all but again it's just that it's a little bugbear of mine and I'm sort of standing my ground to it. At the end of the day, I might have to back down and we'll pay him. And then, you know, we'll just have a pause button. It's just that, you know, from my point of view, we're paying for it anyway. It's not like we're having a new design or anything else. So I'm just trying to keep it as simple for everybody to use as possible. I can't see what the big problem is from just doing it, though. 
Oh, it's not like they've got to redesign the old system or anything. No, it's I know. Surely, surely it can't be that hard to code a pause button in it. Andy, you're a bit more tech than I am. Would it be a odd thing to do? Or I, I can't see why. It, yeah, it just it's probably a two minute job or a five minute job for somebody to do it, and yet they, I don't know. They just to me, it's just they're trying to fleece you out of some more money. Mm. That's to me, it just it just really looking. annoyed me that we've been with them for so long and some of the crap we've had to put up with as well because their system is flawed and broken, which I've really got on their back with a lot of time to get it fixed. And, uh, you know, then eventually they sort it out uh, and various things. And it was like last straw with me. It was like, look, you either fix it or we're off, you know. Um, and it just seemed to be they didn't give a shit, if I'm honest, that it was like, brilliant, you know, where does that leave me? So I must admit, I'm sort of refusing to pay them any more than we have to, you know, to have something that's like a second rate system, if you like. But, you know, it's just, it's one of those things. But, you know, I don't want to bang on about all these rants all day, but it's something I'm trying to actively fix and sort out. So we are trying different bits and pieces on the side, stuff like that just seems working. So don't be surprised occasionally if these things do, but don't jump completely to conclusions and start getting the flaming crosses out you know and yeah marching up the street and stuff like that because it's just things we try you know like i explained to the guys it was like yeah i've been doing this for 20 years now we started before skype uh, before youtube was even a thing you know um so we've always had to try new things keep at the cutting edge sometimes it works sometimes it clearly doesn't so we take a step back we try and fix it you know and we move forward you know so from that point of view we're always learning ourselves dynamic uh, and moving through and yeah if you've got a massive budget you probably get somebody to design something from the ground up and do it but unfortunately okay. i'm not going to pay somebody a hundred thousand dollars to do that but uh you know it's one of those things we're just working on it we'll get there stay with I us i think the other thing as well is is what we've been doing for the last five weeks isn't the norm no no not we at do, all we, you know me and phil do a live show on a wednesday afternoon yeah mm. And then we do the Thursday night show, and that yeah. is it. That's as much as the the kind of the chat and the interaction is, because you do your own sort of shows and reviews and everything else. When stuff back to normal, this is just exceptional times, mm -hmm. and and it's just giving something back. Like we said before, it's a couple of hours of our day to come and do the chat and show you yeah. some stuff and whatever else, and it's it's nice. It's been nice, but. Obviously, with the chat being flawed, it can be frustrating from our point of view, and obviously and for the, the guys as well. That's the thing. Yeah, it's like not, you know, yeah. we share your frustrations with it because we know sometimes. Like, I, that's why I always say it. Don't worry about putting your question again and again. So if you think it's been buried and we haven't answered it, just ask it again. So you know, that's the the thing to it. You know, don't okay. be sort of thinking we're ignoring you or anything else like that because ninety nine percent of the time we're not. One percent we might be. But yeah. you know, normally we don't we'll go through it. The other way to look at it is as well is we're on sort of five days a week. Mm. So the chances are, you know, if it was just like say yeah. we was on once on a week, a week again, yeah, yeah, you you know what I mean. You're like next week, but we're on like Monday to Fridays for definite. Sometimes on the Saturday. So at some point we are going to see what you want to ask us, I suppose. You know. Yeah. Um. Yeah. <laughs> Right, okay, so getting back. So anyway, just got one here. Question for Phil. Any news that you might get the Flory polo shirts? Again, that's all completely out the window because the company we would deal with to do it, they're on furlough, they're shut down. So how long's a bit of string with all of these things? Um, hopefully, uh, to be honest, guys, a few of you messaged me about what I was wearing yesterday is in the t-shirt. You know, the idea is to basically bring out the polo shirt and the t-shirt again. Um, so, but it, it probably won't be now until the autumn. I wouldn't have thought till everybody's back up and running. And obviously we got to get the monies together to do it. And yeah, so we will see how things work out uh, throughout the summer with this one. I think we've all sort of agreed now that this isn't going away anywhere fast um yeah. we're all going to be in this situation i think for the next few months in one way or another yeah so yes uh, and say from my point of view as well the guy who does our mm. like the and the hoodies and stuff he's he's shot but he literally before this happened um he's recovering from throat cancer yeah so he's yeah. definitely not doing a thing at the minute because he's obviously self-isolating out the way um because his immune system's a bit shot with me so yeah um again it is what it is isn't it so matt tigers asked have you got have you got the canopies that he did for you uh, so again sorry 
Tigger's asking, have you got the canopies? Yes, I have. Thank you very much. I owe you um, more than a beer when we meet up and I'll see you next. But yeah, thank you. Yeah, they're spot on. Yeah. Yeah, I picked them up when we were down at Phil's, wasn't it? From yes. uh, February, was it, we went? Yeah. And so, yes, thank you very much. Appreciate that. Phil, Patrick's asked a couple of questions about your bear. Yes, he I was says, just reading that. Go on. Yeah. So did you put every single rivet line in? Absolutely. Every single rivet I hastened to add. <laughs> and how did you pick which ones to put? Which one? If you didn't, did you pick every? Which one did you choose to put in? No, it had every single rivet placed by hand in every single correct location. Absolutely. Not once did I skimp on any of it, use any whiffery that will do close enough at all. Because you know me, I clearly... No, I didn't. No. I literally, from my point of view, I had a couple of references that showed where the riveting was, but it only showed the big riveting. Because what it was, it was showing you where the formers were and the things underneath, what well, it was obviously being bolted to. So there was other rivets involved with it and clearly they didn't go in. So I just did the major ones everywhere. As far as I could see, it was on my plans. The plans were always a little bit iffy, especially on the underside, because um, it didn't really have any for the underside. So I just took it, the, if it's on the top, it's probably the same underneath. Um, so I did it that way. And then round the back end, if you look at reference photos, and if you go back through the build, you'll see the ones I was using, that there's hundreds. It's literally walls of rivets. It's like a Shackleton. Um, so what I basically did was just pick out the major ones again and put those in. The thing is, I think you have to understand when you're doing re-riveting, like the Shackleton, to be honest, is another good one. If you was to put them all in, it would just be a wall of rivets. Um, and you, you know, from a weathering point of view, I think you'd overdo it. So I would just, because of the scale issue and it getting smaller and narrower, and probably the rivetings are probably oversized to the scale, is just put in the major ones and that gives the effect of rather than trying to replicate it exactly so house has posted it up and says for information if you continue to keep the mouse button depressed on the on the chat scroll bar it won't jump to the bottom yeah we, we do that already but you can't keep pressing it for yeah, 20 minutes because that's what i do Wait. that's what I, I always do as soon as i see it, you probably see me that's why i hold the mouse is yeah. that i keep my finger on it to that question but that's not the ideal because as soon as you let go you've lost it yeah <laughs> Thank you. Trevor's asking, says, uh, Phil, uh, where was it? Is the soup hobby, I think it means special hobby, vegan, 148th, any good? Is it worth the money in Canada about $125? Go on, Bennett. We've got a guest. Hello, she's awake. I'm worried it has no weapons in the kit. Special guest star. Yeah, plastic baby. <laughs> Bless her. <laughs> Um, yeah, at the end of the day, I don't have a problem with the Tarangus, because it is Tarangus, isn't it? Yeah. Yes. It? It's mm. the Tarangus that's the company reboxed by Special Hobby. From a, what I understand, I have reviewed it. You go back, you find the review of it. My problem is you don't get pylons or weapons, but what they Tarangus did was release a series of aftermarket, which apparently corrected the wrong tail. Uh, and the wrong areas with it. It also has got various things that as upgrades. And I'm thinking, why, why didn't you just put it in the kit? It's almost like they're giving you a slightly dodgy kit, but here's all the stuff you can fix it with. And I'm thinking, why didn't they just put it in? I was surprised that Special Hobby didn't just puck it, because that's what they do usually, isn't it? Chuck it all in the box and have a better version of. Yeah. But, um, yeah, they didn't. So I've always just been a little bit wary of them doing it, but you know, at the end of the day, it's it, what have you got? Esky as your other option? Oh, God, Esky or Airfix. So, I mean, yeah, I don't know what the Airfix ones. I've never done that one, but all raised panel lines and ancient. So, right, it's yeah. about how much is it? 125 Canadian dollars. That's it's, it's expensive. That's 60, 70 pounds. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is. But it's pricey, but it is your only choice in that scale. The um, what did the seventy second one come with pylons and stuff? I I'm not sure. I've not heard people moan that it hasn't. So I'm uh, sure. I think I that one did. I think the seventy second one did. It was just the forty eighth one didn't. Mm. Yeah. So yes. <laughs> I laughed. Just like up. 
Tschüss. Eila. Eila. Tschüss. Okay. <laughs> 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 so I'll get Lola in in a minute. <laughs> yeah, we get full lot in. It's Friday. Yeah, Friday. 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 Dress down Friday. 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 Get Sam in. Yeah, get We've Sam in. Him. Just just been past, yeah. Just through his room. <laughs> uh, let me just pop that. Uh, did a forum post uh, on this uh, with no responses yet. Will Mr. Color 181 uh, clear semi gloss spray over decals that were placed over Tamiya uh, X22? <laughs> Or yeah, will the one eight one be too aggressive? Which one's the one eight one? Are they just standard, Mister Color? Is that just the satin? Is it? Yeah, it's standard. Oh, it's this one here, semi gloss. Just standard semi gloss. You should be fine. Again, yeah. I think don't worry so much. I know people worry about it eating in because, to be honest, David, I did see your post, but I was probably answering somebody saying, "Where's my parcel?" Sorry, <laughs> uh, <laughs> but I did see it earlier, and I was going to answer it, and then never got round to it. But the thing is, is that you were saying about you've heard horror stories about it being aggressive and eating in, especially with like um, acrylics underneath. When you're spraying over the top, you just want to make sure, especially the first couple of coats, if you're putting down thin coats, are dry before you come in with a heavy wet one. So I think what people do is sometimes is that if you've got an acrylic coat underneath and it's quite a soft paint or whatever, and even with decals, if you've got a lacquer and it's a very thin coat of lacquer, as in it's got loads of thinners in it, and you put it over it, it will eat into the coat below. But if you just go over it with a quick dry coat, as I call it, so, you know, just a light, light coat over it, let that dry for a couple of minutes, then come over with another one, let that dry for a couple of minutes, then you can come in with a wetter one and it won't eat down into it, you know? Yeah. Right, I think I'm going to have to say goodbye and have a nice weekend. <laughs> All, All right, right mate, no problem. Do. See you later, See you later Ryla. Ryla. Bye. 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 <laughs> bye, bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> I'll see you later. <laughs> See you later. Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, I agree. Look, Matt's in two that, now. Hold on, let me just sort Matt out. Um, that was that was saying where's a parcel, Phil? Yes. Yeah, where's my <laughs> delivery? Yeah. <laughs> right, hold on, let me just set Matt in and we'll bring the other one back up. Okay. Ooh, got my head back. Have you got your head back now, yeah. I must admit you're very clear today. What have you done? Nothing, I don't know. Something's you gone off, isn't it? Banned really somebody clear. from the internet somewhere. Tell you, it's, um, Sunday will be DIY haircut day. Oh, you're going to give it a go? Can we watch uh, well, this? Les, Are you going to stream it live? Les, Les is apparently going to trim it. I will pay for that <laughs> to watch I've, that. Show sh did mine yesterday. Where to be honest, we... I did mine yesterday. I'll do my own. It's easy. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm sure just did me back and sides, just trimmed it in a bit. Just to... <laughs> well, what I have said is if she does make a mess of it, just it will be off. Yeah, yes. that's what I said as well. Uh, it'll be down to a number three <laughs> or number two. I've done it you before, look like so John. Eh? Be like John. Yeah, no, I'm not bothered. It'll grow back, won't it? So, yeah, that's it. So, yeah, so, we're, so Monday could be interesting. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Danny says, uh, Phil and Co, have you ever tried MRP's exhaust soot? If so, what's your opinion on it? What number's that? Or have um, they released a pigment I don't know about? I don't, I don't think I've got that. No. Um, uh, yeah, what's the number? That's the number. Chap, chap up the number, because I've got them all here, but I don't know what the number is. 180. Uh, hold on, let me check. Uh, it's too far away now, it's down the other end. Uh, where are we? 170 Desert Ping. He's got 179. <laughs> yeah, I, I haven't got it. You know what, these aren't in order, which doesn't help. God, this, this could be a while. Where else is on chat, Andy? Because I haven't got chat on. Uh, no, uh, I haven't got it. I've got burnt metals and stuff, but I don't have exhaust soot by the looks of it. 
I must so admit, it must be actual... one of those ones I've bypassed. I think it's an actual paint then and not... Yeah, paint. it's obviously a proper lacquer. Yeah. Um, to be honest, I haven't tried it. It's one of those ones, like exhausty things, I tend to always do myself anyway. I tend to, you know, knock up something if I'm doing exhaust, depending on what it is. If it's World War II, I usually add a little bit of grey to it so it's got that lead look to it, you know? Yeah. Um, from that point of view but as I say if it's normal modern stuff I tend to put a little bit of blue because they have that bluey look to them because they don't have as much lead in them these days so uh, yeah that's it I must admit I haven't actually tried it I don't know if they've done it as a, a leady type World War 2 one or as say a more modern I like um, Tammy smoke really really thin but like I said either put a bit of grey in it or a bit of brown in it or something just to yeah. you know shade it slightly and yeah, but have it really, really thin and just like, you know, rather, you know, do layers rather than sort of like worrying about it. Mm. You see the one from Trevor, it says, Phil, did you, uh, when you built your 40th Hornet, did you uh, did you find the front canopy moulded? Did you find the front canopy moulded? My kit seems to have been quite pop-marked. Your thoughts, please. Right, the front canopy where it joins the, the front of it, the actual no section depending on which one you've got because they've retooled it i've got an original one which actually everyone said it was like oh it's flawed it's unbuildable i never had a problem with it but they've now there's the new boxings of it has got a new tool bit that goes on there that stops that problem um so yes because everyone says about that front canopy not fitting properly but if you've got pot marked and all the rest of it then maybe have a word with Kinetic. Shoot Kinetic a me message directly and simply say, and you'll probably get a new part out of them. That tends to be the easiest way to deal with them. And James said, for the team, regarding Shelf of Doom uh, Shelf Queen kits, what's the longest you've had a kit sat on your shelf between starting a kit and finishing it? It's your Buckeye, isn't it? Is that your one? Oh, no We get way. it down every week. No, no. no. Oh. That's I've got just one. I've baby. Got, I've got that's yeah, that's cracking. Built all mine now. <laughs> oh, I'm I'm racking through mine to be honest. Look, that there, the next one's done. Is a Dragon SDFKZ three five nine. Is that seven. A winter camo? Or is that just dust? That's just dust. <laughs> <laughs> and that must be. If anyone looks on scale, might tell me when it came out. I bought it the year it came out. Yeah, it was a new, it was a new release. 1998. Uh, crikey, that must be... I can't remember whether Sam was born yet or he was just born. And he's 17 now, so... Yeah. And that's... Yeah, still not finished. Mine's actually here, yeah, I've just thought. Because I was thinking, oh, mine are most of them, but it's not. Actually, mine is this. And it's nearly done. And why it's never got finished. And Phil will remember this. Ooh. Because yeah. that the, when I first came down and did a live show with you, because yeah. me and um, John was doing the clippy tracks to it. That yeah. was it, yeah. And this is Tamiya's Pump for D. Yeah. So how long ago is that? Four, four year ago? Five? Maybe five, yeah. Could be five. So I think that is definitely my longest, but it's nearly done. All I've got to do is some frog tracks. Yeah. And I've got them and I started drilling them and I've finished them. <laughs> I think actually that needs to be finished. Yes. Do you know what? I'm going to dig it out. So apart from that, um, the, other, the only other thing I've got, which I was actually thinking, hold on, I'll, let me dig it out. I've, I've run out of ideas for it. And you've probably seen this before. Is this weird Bandai? Oh, right. That's it. I remember that one, yeah. Yeah, I remember that. Well, it's kind of done. Well, not done, but it's sort of... Because I did a bit of scratch building because it was on wheels. It was crap. Yeah. But I don't know what paint scheme to do it in. Yeah, that's definitely I... one of those Jetson jobs, isn't it? Uh, I got from yeah. the sort of bogged down with, you know... Because there's the dude who sits in it, the pilot. It's like a... A uh, Power Ranger. <laughs> you do like a, a red goss or something. And... Yeah, well, I was it, thinking that. You know, it's signed a red and yellow on the box art. I never looked them up. There's not many built, but I don't know. I don't, I don't know. That's why it's sort of 
got stored because I never knew what to do with it. So if anybody's got a cool idea for a paint scheme, <laughs> yeah. let me know and I'll finish it. But yeah, it's a bit weird and very Japanese anime, isn't it? Yes. So apparently you could fire the missiles. It's got a button thing, you know, like a spring. Yeah. You have to load the missiles and you can fire them. So it's a workable toy. Yes, it is a workable model toy. But I don't know, that's, that's knocking on a bit as well, but I don't think it's as old as the Panther. So I'll have to bring the full tracks home because now I've got me super duper little drill bit. It wouldn't take like an hour to put them together and do them, would it? I see Mr. Adam Savage was um, praising your drill. Was there? It's Procon, yeah. It's his tool of the pick thing he was on. I saw it on uh, YouTube the other day. Oh, good old Adam. Yes. What, he was saying, my props on? Yes. Everybody needs one of these and it. Yeah, I know. The thing is, is, he was saying, that's, that's it, it, and, though, quite correctly, it's got a chuck in it. So that's the nice thing with it. Instead oh, of yeah, a normal yeah. collet. Yeah. It's, um, yeah, it's best thing, one of the most useful tools I've bought. 2003 that came out. Uh, I bought it from GDs when it came out. And I bet you paid about 20 quid for it. I can't remember. It wouldn't have been very expensive. It's about 60 quid now, I think. Mm. So, so, so what, 17 years ago. So, yeah, when Sam was born, yeah. Did it feel like finishing it? Yeah. I don't know. It's, yeah. One day. Yeah, I don't know. Do you know what? While I'm on my shelf with Doom, I'm leaving that out because I will actually get it done. <laughs> I've decided. You've spurred me on. To get it done, that's it. it. Uh, Phil and the gang, what do you do with your models once you built them? That's easy. They all go to PM models. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. Up on the mezzanine hey. level, which is huge, by the way. Uh, they're all up there. So God knows how many are up there now. We tend to rotate them. When I do get back up there again, I'm going to bring up all the ones I've been doing for the last six months and I'll rotate them. So, I'll tell you uh, what I'll do actually because tomorrow I've, I've got a member of staff coming back to work so we'll take some photos Andy what yeah <laughs> yeah the uh, yeah we'll and get the uh, Luftwaffe week. get Luftwaffe stuff out as well then yeah we could take some photos and, and yeah. put them up next week and do a bit of a show and tell and perhaps take some photos of the shop yes yeah, yeah. I, did, I, I did have a clear out the event of the skip oh the skip. wow so I was proper on it today when I'd uh, finished what I was doing because I'm just like drowning in cardboard. Yeah. So I thought, oh, great, I'll fill it quick before everybody else gets their uh, mitts into it. So I've got rid of a load of it. So yeah, we could do that, can't we? We can just show them, uh, show them our shop, I think. Yes. Ed says, did Matt say you can thin Vallejo Model A using levelling thinners? Not model A, model colour. Model colour is the white top. Because model A has got thinners in it and I don't think it works. What ratio could you do it? 50-50 um, for model colour. But I bet you can go a bit more with it if you really wanted to. Because yeah. so. I, I used it years ago on a Draken because I needed oh, it's that basalt grey or whatever it is for the underside. Uh, uh, and actually right. what happens is it goes a little bit thick when you first add thinners but very quickly yeah. it comes back so when you first put a drop in it will turn to glue but then just really mix it up and then going 50 50 i to be honest i spray it normally around about 60 40 is my start off and uh you know and it goes down really really nice uh there was a couple of Ooh. others here but the guy's talking about pizza now uh Ooh, pizza apparently. what sort of pizza I don't know. That's what you're saying. What kind of pizza is best to eat when weathering an F14D? Not one with pineapple on. <laughs> Just wrong. Just wrong. I'd, go, I'd, I'd go for a straight pepperoni. Pepperoni or pepperoni? 14D. Mm. Do you reckon? Something a bit spicy? Yeah. I must admit, I must admit, I like my pepperoni. Bit of an animal, me. <laughs> <Pepper on me>. <laughs> <laughs> when's the is back in stock Matt? hopefully next week i'm uh, gonna 
compile an order and put it in for next week to get some more in along can with you, Go on. can you put a couple of bottles in Matt's uh, sorry David Johnson's order uh, if it comes in I can yeah so you want me to hold on and see if it comes back in I take it I better make a note of that because tomorrow I'll be packing it and sending it out if it ain't gone today And David's asking Phil, how does he? I want to go from monthly subscription to yearly. How do I change it? To be honest, the easiest way is to cancel it, and then cancel at any point because you won't get kicked out until it's due. And when it's due, then just resubscribe because you. The way the system works now, and that's the nice thing to it, is that you're never deleted. If that makes sense. So what happens is it, it will, if you cancel your subscription, even if you're monthly or yearly, like now, it won't do anything until it's due. So it tries to take payment, can't take payment. So it puts you in what they call expired. And when you're in expired, when you log in, it says, I'm sorry, you're expired. You need a premium subscription. And then you can just set it up how you like, and then literally do that, click go. Okay. And then it will let you back into the system in that mode as if you've never left. So all it does, because then it just gives you a new 12 digit code, which goes into the system and then the system knows you from that code and away you go. It's really straightforward. One thing though, I get people when they say it hasn't worked when you've come back in, refresh the page. That's all it is. Sometimes if you've got a couple of windows open, that's what it is. It's like, if you've got two, you know, if you've got your screen or multiple screens, if you've got two on and you do it on one, for some reason, it doesn't auto do it to the other. So just press F5 refresh and it will go. Or just close the site, open flooring models back up again and it will let you straight through. It's very, very simple and it saves me all the headache of having to do it manually, which I love. <clears throat> yeah, so if you can put it with his order, please, Matt. Will do. House is asking a question. House, we already... Yeah, we've well, actually done that, that one. We've just been through all of that. <laughs> Where were we? Did you go away from here? Yeah, can you step, step away for a minute? We actually answered your question. Well, yeah, basically, yes, you can. Yes, you can. Nice light coats, build it up, you'll be fine. And I even said that I tried to answer him earlier, but I couldn't. Oh, God, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> What's the difference between the Procon, FWA, and the WA? The MAC valve, isn't it? I do believe it is, isn't it? One has the MAC valve, which is the one underneath the colour cup. And the normal uh, WA doesn't have it. Yeah. But... Actually, the running of it is no different. It'll be the same needle. Exactly the same, or... everything. It just doesn't have a Mac yeah. valve. I highly recommend getting the Mac valve one, though. I don't know what the price difference is, but it's worth it because the Mac valve is absolutely one of the best ones I've ever used. I think it's about 20, 20 or 30. I don't know. It's on the site if you go. Yeah. The, well, there you go. So, I'm not being funny. You'd pay more than that. You pay 30 quid for a good Mac valve on its own. So, um, yeah, it yeah. says it's working at the same time as listening. Oh, oh it's right, working. Yes. Good, good one, yeah. Yeah, her wine piece, it's always got ham and pineapple on it, hasn't it, everywhere. Just wow. that, except Matt doesn't like pineapple. And why do like. they say that? A Hawaiian? I get the pineapple bit because they grow all the pineapples there. But why ham? Is there lots of pigs in there? Do they have lots of pigs there? Not when I was there. I didn't see any pigs. I saw a couple, <laughs> but not rife. Pineapples I get because they have pineapple plantations everywhere. But, yeah, I don't get the uh, the pig thing. I'm sorry, Matt's, fa get... Matt's favourite food, if you ever want to send him any... <laughs> It's salt and vinegar crisps. Yeah, well, it's just vinegar. Anything with vinegar on. <laughs> He's <Don't> vinegar phobic. Don't <laughs> waste your money. Is that a word for your condition of your allergic reactions to vinegar? Yeah. That's it. Just vile stuff. <laughs> He's vinegar phobic. That's it. I've just invented it. Vinegar phobic, yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Phil, when was the last time you were there? Ooh, four years ago now. Four, was it? Four years? Yeah, four. Seems, seems longer. Perhaps it was five. I can't remember. What was it 2015? So, yeah. Summer 2015. Well, no. Yeah, it's about this time, was it? It's May 2015 I was over there. So, yeah, five years ago now. I'm there. Crikey. Is that man. when you did the... Um... Uh, what was it? The airfix. Yeah, well, I did a load, didn't I? I thought I was away for like a month. So yeah. it was like, right, I've got to get enough for you lot to see and watch. So if I remember, Hulk, it wasn't Hulk, like I did the Bradley, hurricane, the Hurricane. I did I did like three or four to keep you lot all amused whilst I was away. 
So I know what everyone did. They probably just bins watched it in the first two days and then just sat around doing nothing for the rest of the month. But I did put out, I think it was four. I'm pretty sure it was the Bradley, the Hurricane, the Sea Harrier, uh, and someone else we were trying to get them through. Because I remember I was pulling my hair out, working through the night, trying to get them all done. But yeah, and then we had the fun with the Hurricane because it didn't quite go according to plan. But um, yeah, it was all right. So that yeah. kit's five year old? Must be, because I had it when it was new release. It was new when you had yeah. it, yeah. Yeah. Oh, blimey, it's just been re-released. Yeah, there you go. So that, and I wonder if that was planned. I know it's obviously because of the Battle of Britain um, thing this year, but I wonder if that's sort of the cycle. Mm. Dig out the moulds and give the kits another air in, do you know what I mean? Because I wonder if it's got different decals to what you originally had. Yeah, maybe. Your, is yours there? Yeah. Dig it out. It's up W. It's what? Up W on the markings. Up W. Up W. Let's have a look. Hold on. This... Where are we? No, this one's different. This one's got um, Romeo Frock Fox Trot Juliet and Alpha Lima Kilo. Oh. So it's two different. Got what? Oh, the the bottom one's got a red spinner. Oh. The bottom one actually the yeah that one's quite cool actually the bottom one mm. and it's got the foot here yeah, yeah, look hold on hold on coming to you can you see oh hold on you've oh shit you've moved now <laughs> hold on we we'll have to go back to normal there we oh. go hold on there we go hold on hold on stay where you are oh no Here's shit that. it's because you guys moved around you've screwed <laughs> i can't hey, well, get you i'll put my overhead on well no it's not that it's the camera angles all changed because i've moved them all for nathan Oh, Nathan's fault, was it? No, it's Nathan's not fault. <laughs> Phil's just painted with Italieri acrylics, if I remember. Yes, we gave a whirl with the Italieri acrylics on that. Um, interesting paint. It's like toothpaste. There you go. Here we go. Can there you see you that? Yep. So you've got a red stripe slash yeah. coming down the tail on that one and that one's got a red spinner with a mm. a bit there what have you done to the box is he sat on it uh, oh well guess who this has come from i don't want to name names but yeah <laughs> there you go it's about right <laughs> super packaging as usual oh oh you hear that that's not a seal that's a dog <laughs> <laughs> just about uh yes. david says question if i understand correctly the orders sent to the states are not currently being tracked no all orders to the states are being fully tracked all the way through it's just in the uk so yes if you've ordered david it's on its way would have gone out today um if you've ordered since wednesday uh so yes all all on the way but you can track them all the way right the way to your door but again we had a little bit of trouble with that because um one of our members he ordered a wash set and a sander set and it sat in customs for over a week just didn't move it just stayed there nothing happened and just as we were about to send him another order uh to see if it got through any quicker it suddenly moved and said next thing you know it's on his doorstep so Andy, hey andy's froze <laughs> was he i thought he was just scratching his eye <laughs> oh my god that's brilliant where's my drawing tool <laughs> oh no he's back on his overhead is he back <laughs> you know what picking his nose <laughs> i'll tell you andy you really need to sort your internet out mate it's rubbish no, i'm not i'm not 100 sure it's not my computer you know do you think do you think it needs updating i'll tell you what it probably is and not being funny would you remember when we um i had live liam here when he was living yeah. at home it was the thing every time he went on netflix and started watching something that initial bit yeah. until it buffers in i used to go to eight bit yeah. and so i used to run upstairs and tell him to get off and he did and he wouldn't go on it whilst we were doing the live shows then no problem at all sam would have palpitations if i told him to get off the internet i think you ought to go and do it just I to think, see yeah go and pull his internet <laughs> Yeah. right whilst we've got a minute and we're running out of time and we all do it shall we have a look around at some of their great work they've been doing this week we're running out of time it's only 25 past four i know that but we want to have a look around the forum don't we 
Can I just quickly, uh, Stefan says, anyone know what the yellow squares on the hurricane wings are for? Yes, they are um, for gas, wasn't it? That yeah. They change colour if they've got gas detected. Because obviously yeah. after World War One, I, I don't think they used them in late war, did they? No, I think they realised that they were useless and the pilots probably dead before they... Yeah, I think the major problem was by the time the pilot's seen that it's changed colour, he's probably dead. So, <laughs> but I don't think it, gas wasn't really used in World War Two anyway, was it? Not as much. No. Uh, right, OK, let's have a look down in here in Covid land. Henry VIII. Henry VIII has arrived from Michael. Look at that. Uh, what, a, what a fine specimen. He is. What a nice cod piece. <laughs> <laughs> Better than the one I did about 40 years ago. <laughs> I'm just impressed with his tights and slip-ons. Yes. Look, have I got That's my little cool. finger that works? Look. Oh, look, I can look. Isn't that clever? I can write it. Well, it's in the wrong font on this page for some reason. Sorry, let me take that off. The slip-ons because you had gout and you couldn't get proper shoes on. Yeah, probably. And they were his thingy socks for his deep brain thrombosis. DVT, yeah. Yeah. Very good. Look at that. Man. Cool, that, isn't it? God, that's an old kit. How old's that now? See, that's, that's when air fixed his bases. That's got to be 60s, isn't it? Surely. Got to be. He's got, he's got a big cod patch. Yes. <laughs> so nobody let me loose with the whiteboard thing. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> He's uh, done a good job of that. He has. Yeah. Excellent. Well That's done. an old, old, old kit as well, isn't it? It is an proper, old, old, old. Proper yeah. airfix, that is. So, well done. Congratulations on that. Yeah, well done, mate. Uh, the Hayford. The uh, Hayford. 72nd Hayford. Yeah, nice one, James. Looks fantastic. Yeah. That does build into a... It does, not it? A model, that does. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, fantastic. You've got to love being the bloke underneath, haven't you? In the gondola, yeah. <laughs> sat down there. <laughs> uh, so there you are in like fabric and a bit of wood, <laughs> hanging in a dustbin at the bottom of a plane. Yeah, being shot at. Yeah, <laughs> brilliant. Proper wacky races. Very <laughs> good. Excellent job. Very nice indeed. And do do uh. Huey Cobra, 72nd. Ah, look, I remember doing this one. Did this one myself. Remember the box art remember more than that. the kit. Look at that. The slick. And it's on a stand. There we go. Fantastic. Looks apart, doesn't it? It is, isn't it? Nobody does an early one, do they? Um, in bigger scales. I no, think no. somebody did release... I can't think who it is now, but I think Special Lobby might reboxed it, but somebody else has done a seven second one, but not a, not in the bigger scale. Is it two the same? Yeah, all right, we've got two posts running there. Somewhere. David's saying that Henry VIII looks like him after five weeks in lockdown. <laughs> the other guy's been doing his uh, John w uh, Joe Wicks workouts then. <laughs> okay, Brian's done a nice diorama look with a sunken... Wait, was it a T55? T62. Yeah. Very nice. Oh, that. Well done. That's very cool. Very imaginative, yeah, very. that one. Yeah. Very nice indeed. Yeah, nice to that. It is. I like that. It's cool. It is. Nice, that. Yeah. Nice and subtle the way it's all done as well. Yeah. Very nice. Very cool. Mm. Definitely a few pictures. <laughs> Why not? Can never have enough pictures. I usually moan that nobody has enough photos. Yeah, you know, the people who just do three. I need more photos. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Okay, what have we got? Lysander. The Lysander Airfix Ooh, one. The Airfix Lysander. This is the one with the uh, special agent getting in it. Oh, with that's his it. Was briefcase. S O B. You just imagine, hello, hello, we've got him out to the airfield. Yep. <laughs> Very nice. Doesn't look too bad, actually, does it? Yeah, the agent looks good, doesn't it? Huh? Special agent. 
It is, yeah. That's, that's come out all right, that, hasn't come it? Come out all right, actually. I must admit, for some reason, I always thought that was a terrible kit, but it doesn't look too bad there. done a good job on it. I don't think the Apex one was. I think, obviously, now the Dora Winged ones took over. Is that what Mark uh, Lysander is it? Does it say? Uh, n- no. Yeah, I can never work out the differences. It looks like Inspector Gadget. He does. It's Inspector Gadget just got on board. <laughs> Okay, right flyer. Ooh, Riggy. Hey, look, the little dude on there as well, on the wing. Yeah. Oh, no, he's not. No, he's he's running next to it. It looks like he was on the wing. (laughs) Look at that. Nice rigging job. So, well, that's uh, took some doing. It is. Look how far we've come in 100 odd years. I was about to say exactly the same. Can you imagine getting on that thing and hoping it takes off and, and lands at the other end? It's amazing, hey, Kermit's really. Got, hey, Kermit's got something like one of them, isn't he? A Is power he? one. Yeah, I've seen him fly around a really weird, rickety looking yeah. contraption that, yeah. Ooh. Okay, so we've got the testers, F14A. Don't look bad, that. It's quite alright. That's alright, that. That's very smart. Ghost Rider, the pattern is full. You ever built one of those? I haven't done the testers one, no. Is that an Italeri kit, though? I think it must be, because it's raised panel lines. But the... No, because the Italeri one is recessed. I've got a feeling that's the Esky one, isn't it? It could be, I don't know. I don't know, I've got a feeling that one's... It's a very soft recessed panel lines on the Italeri one, or the Italeri one, so, yeah. Nice book. Mm. Very nice book. Got that. Very good. Excellent. Nicely done. Yes. Stephen's asking to go be a show tomorrow. Uh, can do tomorrow night. I'm free. I'm free. Mr. Humphreys. <laughs> tomorrow, what? E- evening time we're doing it. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 Free, yeah. It will be an informal one, clearly. Yeah. yeah. We'll be back to modelling, hopefully. I'll be drunk by then. <laughs> yeah. Drowning my sorrows, thinking of postage. Um, <laughs> there we go. Something a little bit different, obviously, because don't forget, this does coincide with the uh, Easter egg uh, SIG that never properly happened because we sort of rolled it into COVID. So we got the love bomb. That's brilliant. Look at that. How clever is that? Very clever. I couldn't work out if it was walking or bombing, but I think it's bombing. <laughs> Excellent job. Look at that. Good imagination. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Brilliant job. Very nicely done. On a lovely sunny day as well. Let's have show Lydia that one. She'd like yeah, that. She'd like that. Appreciate that. Well done, Michael. Beautiful work. Well yeah. Uh what else we got? Oh look, matchbox seventy second Dornia. Ooh, look. Look, Matt. Great kit. <laughs> Scrub looks all right. Did, didn't it? Yeah. See, again, I think it needs us to do these types of group builds and SIGs just to prove that actually all those nightmares that we say about old kits being crap, actually they weren't. We were just crap modellers. Yeah, that's probably more to the, <laughs> the point. The kits were all right. It was actually us. We just say, yeah. oh, the models were terrible in those days and how haven't we come so far and all the rest of it. But actually, I think it's the other way around. We were just really bad modellers. The kits were all right. That's all right. Yeah, that's but the thing cool. is, though, because we were dealing with crap kits, we've got more, you know, experience. Yes. So it stands you in good stead for when, you know, you get a good kit, I hmm. suppose. Definitely. Oh, David's what? finished his. A what? Um, I can't pronounce it. How do you do that? Is it a Chibi Maru? A Chibi. It's a Chibi Maru, is it? Ah, oh, I get it. <laughs> oh, God, that's Flesh. it. I've started. I'm symptomatic. Quick, test. Quarantine yourself. <laughs> Look at that. Good photo, that. That is a good photo, that, isn't it? It is. And that one. Hmm. 
Very nicely done. Well done, David. Don't panic. Next year, we'll get you back on form because David normally hosts our uh, group build, you see, for this one. So we sort yeah. of got Gazant this year because we've all been taken over with all this stuff. But next year, we'll get back on track with it and do it all properly. A sepsis, what's that? A sepsis one. <laughs> a sepsis one. <laughs> oh, oh, that was it. I remember the, the build of this one. Wasn't many parts. Yes, they were, were they? Done a good job there. Yeah. That's got that proper yeah. old look to it as well, which is really, really nice. It's sort of in keeping with the kit. Yeah. Very nice, because that wasn't brilliant kit, was it? Let's face it. It wasn't many parts, but they weren't nice, any of them. Good job. Very nice. Nice job on the sepsis. <laughs> yeah. Not a great name. No. Canberra from Lee. The old camera. Of the camera. original. Look at that. <laughs> cool. Very nice. Well done. Nice well done. done. Beautiful work. Uh, da, 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 uh, this is from John. And we've got here a Revel F4. Looks good. Very good. See? It, was it looks, like, looks like a phantom to me. Absolutely. Has it got a stencil data on it? <laughs> what? Every single one? Every one. <laughs> <laughs> no, that works. Beautiful job. Very nice job on that. Yeah, well done. You never got stencil data on old kids though, did you? No. Not many, no. Thank I God. <Yeah>. Uh, where are we? Uh, promised? I think we're up to date now. Is this I think. up to date from the other day? Yeah, yeah we're it is, yeah. We? Thank you. Very some nice. Good, some good stuff, like I said. They, they, they scrub up all right, some of these older kits. Hmm. Yeah, we're down to that normal ones. Very good. Well done, guys. That's absolutely fantastic work by all. So if we just have a look at the uh, group builds, because obviously you've only got a couple of days left on the... MIG one, isn't it? Yes, Andy. Haven't you, Andy? Yeah, I've got six days left. Six days. Mm -mm -mm. Right, okay. Keith? Ooh. Ooh. Very nice. That's Who's nice. marking that? Is that Slovakian, Georgian? Slovakian? Slovakia, I think, yeah. It's a Slovak one. Very nice. It is. Nice job on that. Good scheme, isn't it? Mm, it is. I quite like that. It's like Moo Cow, isn't it? Mm. Doing it that one. Very nice. Very cool. And MiG-21. Oh, I like that as well. Actually, that's really nice in the grey. I would never have thought a MiG in a grey would look nice, but with the check tail and that, that's actually quite a smart camo, that is. Mm. So, I was just thinking the same. I thought a MiG-21 in grey, that's going to look a bit... Yeah. Not. That really that's, works. It really works, doesn't it? Yeah, I quite like that. Yeah. Is it out of the box? Is the decals out of the box? Or? Yeah, I think they are. Yeah, it's one of the Eddard ones, so probably. No, nice the Polish markings. They do do some good schemes. Is it it's Czech, isn't it? Is it Czech? I think. Is it Czech or yeah. Polish? I don't know, actually. I don't know. Well, it looks like the Polish in low vis. Oh, it could be. Yeah, it does, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah it could be, yeah. I must admit, I'm really cr there. crap at that part of the world. You know what? I think it's cro Croatian. Oh, is it? Yeah, because looking at the tail, because it's got the... The crest. Yeah, I'm sure yeah. it's Croatian, I think. Mm. No, Somebody in like, live chat is shouting out saying it's Croatia. Yeah, I've just seen the tail, so yeah, it's a Croatian one. Cool, mm. though, that in grey. Yeah, it is really nice, isn't it? Yeah. I've got a picture of the uh, red and white check one on my wall at the side of me. <laughs> Right, MiG 29s to MiG 25s. Very nice. The ICM one? Yep. Very nice. Good kit, that. I do. I like that. I like the engineering with this side piece. That was a very yeah. clever way of doing it, getting rid of it. Otherwise, you'd have bloody seam lines down here. It's just horrible. Who's, who's falling asleep at the back? 
Sorry, I was just Who's yawning? Really <laughs> I'm just stepping my door like some fresh air. It looks like it will be. I'm fast asleep. <laughs> okay. MiG 29s. Oh, that's quite nice. So this is 70 Seconds Vesda by Alan. In flight, look. Punching well high. High alpha. He's only got another arm and he's in the display team. Yeah. <laughs> Five, six. A couple six, of flankers in there as well. Yeah. It's the Swifts, isn't it? The Swifts, yeah. Five, look. That's 05, so. Yeah. Where's the other four? Yeah. <laughs> They'll be forming up later. <laughs> <laughs> he's gone solo. <laughs> yeah, perhaps that's the solo pilot. No, call that. Okay, so uh, MiG 23. All the RV kit. Doesn't look too bad, that. No. Mm -hmm. I'm talking shape, not build, before somebody takes me the wrong way. I was actually thinking, because normally the 70 second ones, they just make a dog's ear around the canopy area. They just don't look right. That one looks all right. Good job. And it's got a shark's mouth, so it gets bonus. I like the camo as well. Yeah. To greens, yeah, baby, isn't it? Hmm. Very nice. Good job on that. But that's not an easy kit to build either. I don't think. No. So he's done a good job of that. I yeah. Nice wash on that as well. Look, and yeah. he gets oh, bonus oh, points oh, for getting the sand. I was, say, I was about to say that's nice product placement. <laughs> <laughs> yes, this video may contain product placement. Okay, uh, Mig Fifteen, Egyptian. Oh, we saw oh. this one saw that one but yeah it's nice isn't it yes. so we're up to date with that one cool what's in the latin the latino or has everybody been that one off because they've been doing yeah for 19 builds Where are we? latino oh shit wrong one oh sorry my french bonjour <laughs> oh come on uh, where are we? There it is. Ecuador! Right, so we got here from Rob, Mirage F1. Is that a kitty or what? Yes. No, it's a tallery. No, it's an airy one, isn't yeah. it? It's the old esky one. Nice cockpit. I don't think that builds up too bad, you know, that kit. No. It's a bit basic, but I think it's less of a handful than the Kitty Hawk version. Mm, yeah, I think it's probably more of a straightforward build. You do get good decals with yeah, the... I was going to say, lovely the decals, boxing. isn't it? Yeah. That's quite cool. I like that as a snake. It is. I do like the Mirage F1. I think it's a very nice looking aircraft, actually. Missed them because I was supposed to go to Riyadh. And it, wasn't it the yeah. year they cancelled Riyadh? It was the year they were there. And it was the last ones. And it was like, ah! But for whatever reason, I missed it. I wanted to go to Riyadh that year to see him. No, nice that. Good job. Very, very. nice job. Because I say, just showing older kits like that actually scrub up very well. You know what? That could be a, a thing for the other bit group builder. Oh, you know. The Covid build, couldn't take it, it's that older kit. Yeah, that's it. Oh god, Kinetic one. Kinetic. Oh. From Bob, this is yeah. the Mirage M5. There you go. Do you know the, uh, that Croatian MiG? Yeah. James says that his friend, Croatian fly, friend flies that MiG. He says that he escorted Croatia World Cup team home after, be, after beating England 2-1. Was that stopping yeah. Orit? That's trying to stop the RAF getting. Yeah, we were trying to ram it. <laughs> <laughs> nope, nice job on that one, Bob. Oh, done, Bob. Uh, an Etendard. Where is it then? Oh, there it is. There it is. Sorry. Delay. Nice. Oh, done. Very nice. Nice job on that. Mm. That's quite a nice one, that one. Oh, I quite like them because they still used, or did use, the old bridal system, didn't they, for the catapults. So they used to, like, basically yeah. be hanging in the air, nose wheel off the ground, and then they'd <laughs> fling them off the ship, wouldn't it? It was like, bloody yeah. hell. Oh, 
Very nice. Good job. Yeah, Just goes to show, Kitty Hawk, you can do it. You can put it together. Look, look there's John. There's you. Yeah, hello. <laughs> and there's a floor mug. Yeah, get the product placement in. Full of sadness. Good job. Yeah. No, that's a good job actually on that one because I say we always are a little bit eesh about Kitty Hawk, but there you go. Just shows the show. Bit of work. Uh, what we got? A 1 to 700 Flyhawk uh, conversion Rio de Janeiro 1911. Right, what do you think this is then? Ship. It's a ship. Look at that. Nice water base as well. And it is a ship. It is a proper ship. Um, again, it, it's really difficult to photograph ships, isn't it? Because there's no easy angle to get a lot of it in. Yeah. But yeah, it puts it into perspective with the size of a bottle of, you know, standard sort of 17 mil bottle. That's proper ickle. But no, I like that. That's good. Goes along with the other one, look. Yeah, the little sailing ship. Very nice. But I like the base. Really nice base with that as well. Yeah. Cool job. Very good. Uh, Dragonfly from Patrick. In Honduras markings. Honduras. Very nice. But more traditional camo. Yeah, straight it? up Vietnam, isn't it? Yeah, that's right. Bloody carries a lot, doesn't it, for a little thing? But it struggles yeah. on takeoff. <laughs> <laughs> it's got any fuel in it. It's got no fuel in it. Can't do the weight. Very nice. Cool, though. Yeah. Hmm. Very cool. And uh, doo -doo -doo. I think we're down to where we were because didn't we see the other duck last time? Yeah, I think we did. I think we did. Now, yeah, we, yeah, we are up to date yeah. now. That's us up to date. Good job on the duck as well. Nice looking model. Very cool. You, you got that one, Matt? No, I've got a, a, a Gosling and a, the other one. That a widgeon, because you've got a widgeon, haven't you? Mm. Gosling and the bigger one. What's the bigger one? Grumman. Oh God. Goose. Goose. goose yeah. Yeah. Got a Grumman goose. That's it. Because you've got one with full resin, haven't you? Which one was the one we got at a show? Yeah, I can't remember. Yeah, I can't remember either. Yeah. It's a Sinifer, Significant, is it? A Sinifer? That's it, yeah. Sinifer, yeah. Sinifer, yeah. Yes. Good kit, actually, but... Yeah. Uh, Neil says, question for Phil. Can you use oils or enamel thinners uh, on a Bandai X-Wing? I seem to remember that Bandai Plastic doesn't like it. Again, it's not the oils, it's the thinner that's where the problem is um i would just be very very wary of it because I've, i i can prove the fact well i could do i think i've got a sprue left anymore but i did a little bit of a test uh, which i was going to mention but for some reason i forgot about it but i actually put in a set of crocodile clips uh, what a pair like these which are quite strong you know they've got quite a bite to them i just put in literally a piece of sprue from the band i kit <clears throat> and then i soaked it in thinners and I just left it. And when I came in in the morning, it had bitten straight through it. It had literally gone through. So it crumbled the, the actual sprue and eaten through it. And that's by just holding. But these are quite strong, don't get me wrong. So it's this thing we're talking about. If the plastic is under pressure, and I think because obviously I'd cut the sprue at both ends, the enamels had soaked into the sprue and then it just starts to dissolve it. And because there's pressure onto it, it crushed it. And this bit through the sprue. So... So it dissolves it inside out then? I think that's saying? what it's doing, yeah. I think it's actually, um, you know, when you cut sprue, if you know, on the inside, it's quite porous, isn't it? Uh, yeah. And it, I think it leaches inside it, and then literally it the, the pressure from the outside then crushes. You know, it's dissolving it almost internally inside out, and it crushes it. So that's why I'd say I'd just be careful. I think you're fine if you're just using, you know, a, you know, a thin little coat, and it dries quite quickly. The trouble that you get if you've got an area where you've got a join, obviously it, the capillary action is going to go in, and it's going to flood in amongst it, and then it can get through. But again, if the parts are all sealed you're great but if you've got like where you cut it off the sprue i think it then can egress into it or if you've sanded it it can actually get into it then but that i think is the problem 
you know, I'm quite happy. I'll do the test again. We'll leave it soaking over the weekend. But you literally just if, try it at home. Get a piece of Bandai plastic, cut it both ends, put it in some crocodile clips, soak it in some thinners for a few minutes, take it out and leave it and come back in day or two. It will crumble. I think that that's the trouble. I think it's the enamels attack the plastic for whatever plastic. But if you go onto the uh, Gumpler Gundam World forums and stuff like that, they avoid using oils. Well, not so much oils as I say. It's enamel thinners on that type of item, and they'll tell you not to use it. So one of those things it's just one of those things i think yeah because i said we've had people on here and they say oh it never affected me and i've used it all over it and again it's fine i think it's literally if it's under pressure it crushes so if you've got joins and things that's when it can happen but again you might use a milder um mineral spirits for instance which isn't as aggressive uh and doesn't do it but if you're using quite a strong aggressive thinner it will do it mm. James has posted a, a video of the MIG uh, escorting the Croatian football team home oh. to MIGs flanking it. It was quite mm. good, actually. Mm. And Graves posted a, a link. It was the uh, Ed Ock, and it was the Around the World MIG 21 Bis Around the World uh, Limited Edition kit. Oh, right, okay. So now he's got 20 other sets of decals left off the sheet. Right, but it must have come with about 15 options, won't it, or something, if I remember. There's a lot of options. Yeah, and, uh, you do with those ones. So, Neil, yeah. the thing is, that's what we're saying as well, you know, it's it's okay if you're going to overcoat it, your model, and to protect it and everything else, then the enamel technically can't eat through the paint once it's rock hard and dry, and you'll be fine. So, you know, I would say just be very careful how you do it. I used a wash on the Bandai Falcon that I did, but I used it very sparingly. I wasn't chucking it over it like I technically will do. You know, like for instance, classic example, when we get going with the uh, 2001 um, Odyssey one, I will go right to town over with that and it will get flooded in it because I know the plastic's okay. And that's how I do my large scale sci-fi stuff. But with Bandai, I'm always just a little bit careful because it has bitten me. I've had it happen a couple of times now. So yes. Mm -hmm. Apparently seven options in that kit. Seven. Mm. It's not bad though, is it really? <laughs> no, it's it. Mine, mine's coming on though, it's all primed and I've painted the bottom in mid grey. RLM, RLM 65. Yeah, didn't you say that is F16 um, medium grey though? Looks... I ended up having to then thin it with, lighten it with yet a white and I've oh. post shaded it and in white well with very light grey not like they were clean under there so don't worry about it no not at all but i've ended up mixing the whole bottle up a bit <laughs> trying to get it light enough <laughs> and because i've not done the uh, undercarriage doors or anything else and I've, i needed uh, plenty of it so i can get the right color same color right don't forget everybody Hold on, I'm trying to be stealthy here to bring this up, but it's not working because you've all stopped talking. The no. final part of the MiG-23 build is up on the site. You've probably all seen it already. I'm trying to get you the other version of it. Oh, shit, I've got to scroll down and see. Stealthy, this. Through the build we go. Through the build we go. No, one more. Where are we? Jesus, there's 13 parts to this. Um, there we go. Seamless. Stop. There you go. So the final part of the MiG-23 build is up. And I'll be honest with you. I went to pick this up before we came on air. Actually, Matt had just phoned in when I'd finished fixing it. Because I picked it up like that to move it. And all the weapons snapped off in my hand. So I was like, ah. So that's it. But anyway, it is all back together again now, literally just before we came onto air, uh, because yeah, the weapons all came off. So anyway, the final part of this is up on the site right now. Obviously, it covers the pilot, the pilot being installed, unmasking all the final pits, getting the afterburner bit done here, down here for the exhaust, mounting it up, all the areas, and completes the build. So as you can see, it is up on the site now. There's me doing the pilot figure. We gave him a bit more of a tan. I went over him some more oils 
as you can see, to make him a bit more skin coloured instead of death. Um, there mm. we are. That's the nozzle system. So I did it like this and then it plugs in the back. OK, so you can see it in there like that. There it is. All completed. And then obviously there's loads of pictures. These are the small ones. If you go on the main site, you've got big photos for it. But obviously you get the final reveal of it spinning round like a good one. Uh, on its stand for the final reveal one but yes all completed finished off have to say beautiful kit you know considering it's old school trumpeter and i've had it sat in my stash forever and then obviously with the uh, bedner version coming out uh it was a case of with that gorgeous schemes it was going to have to be a uh, definitely going to have to do it job uh, so yes, we went off and uh, had a go at it. A little bit tricky with the decals, to be honest. They do need a little bit of work to get them down, but once they're in, absolutely fantastic. Weathering was pretty much straightforward as we normally do. But again, it just goes with my nice little collection of having them in flight. So you can go off and see the final part of that now, which completes my build like that. And then obviously at the same time as all of this, also, hold on, seamless, get over here. And then uh, we need to seamless go like that. There, seamless. seamless this. We go like that. And then we go that. And we go and also completed my little Trojan. Which a big thank you to Tony. Who's been a supporter and very good friend of mine for a long time now. Christ, Tony. How long have we <laughs> known each other? I think Tony was actually one of my original members from back in the day. Anyway, he came and saw me at uh, Telford and stuck... Uh, this little kit in my hand and said you need to build this it's a beautiful kit and to be honest you know what it's like at Telford it's quite busy and I sort of looked at it and thought god it's hella um, but there you go Tony you've actually restored my faith in hella kits <laughs> because it was a great build and although I caused a lot of trouble myself trying to you know trying to be smart at the end of the day uh, by trying to get it seamless around the canopy and ended up having to, well, rescribe and redo and fill and sand and everything else like that. Actually, it's something very, very nice. And it's one of those kits where you know you've built it. You know, it wasn't shake and bake. It wasn't a two minute job. It took a little bit of work, but really thoroughly enjoyed it. And what the great thing was, was obviously we built it live with you guys, which is absolutely fantastic. Really, really did enjoy that one. So uh, thank you for Tony for doing that. And you've inspired me so much that Matt's got me in this, which we spoke about the other day, and it's Hella, and again, it's one of those bucket list kits that I'd like to do in the future. Oh. So I'm not building it anytime soon. Obviously, clearly, I've got a VC10 to build. But, hey, um, why, why, hey, why not? You're flawed. Well, this is it, but I'm not allowed to work in theory. So, yeah, <laughs> so I'm not allowed. Uh, so yeah, <laughs> so anyway, uh, we've got this little gem. Uh, at some point I will be doing it I don't quite know how we're going to do it I'd like to do it somewhat in flight but yeah that just a whole new kettle of fish on its own really so yes so we got that one. up with you tomorrow because obviously we're on a roll with reviews I'm going to stick out the T55 okay so the T55 will be up with you probably around about midday that'll be up with review and also this which is this which was a little present to me courtesy of the uh lovely kareen sent me the holder and that's all it is but it is very blingy and it is very nice so um i've done a little mini review just in case you need to know how to use it <laughs> so but, uh, you know we were talking about uh opening bottles well because it's yeah. got a rubber foot on this there you go that's on tight it's great you can screw it up and down and it's it doesn't slip around or anything else like that so yes that's ideal so uh, thank you to Creed but I've done a little video about it purely we're just saying how nice their stuff is and if you paint anything red and silver I'll buy it because I'm a magpie so <laughs> yes oh look I forgot to close the box <laughs> hold on <sighs> so yes are you, um, are you keeping that box I probably am to be honest I'm going to keep the box because it's a little bit of uh, history with it that is. one it is yeah so it's uh, a nice little I'm original Thing. but the thing is this it's the same box art and everything isn't it if you bought the kit tomorrow yeah i think because yeah, this kit is available if you want to have a go at it as well it is available yeah. so then it's dead cheap i think it's about seven quid or so it's it, it pretty bargain. cheap yeah no it is. Um, it's a lovely little kit and also i don't think you'll probably build another uruguayan airplane again i can't you? imagine uruguayan making much of a uh yeah a, a thing but yes it's uh definitely one of those uh kits that i fondly will remember purely because it was a lot of fun to do can we quickly get the last two questions in chat yes yeah. david says question 
Is it right to use abtalum oils as a wash on top of Tamiya acrylics without first doing a future gloss on top of the Tamiya paint layer? Oh, yeah, it's fine. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, no problem. Yeah, completely different medium. So, yeah, absolutely go for it. Yes. And the thing is with oils, the capillary reaction is far better and the uh, drying time than with the enamels to say like these panel liners which are enamel mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you can reactivate oil paints for quite a long time after to clean them up so i do prefer to be honest i do prefer oil washing too to but you're them. still you're still better off using a floral models wash obviously well clearly because it's going oh, look cup tea's arrived in Ooh, a floral cup hello shell hello shell Hi. <laughs> and also patrick says will brevco remain supplied uh, well, again, I can't speak for Brevco because they are a stockist, but if they've got supplies or not, they did have a delivery go out to them the other day, but obviously I can't speak for them. They're not my company, but yes. So, yes, probably. They've got stocks at the moment. I know that because they did have a delivery go out a few weeks ago, but if what they've got and what they're doing, I don't know either. I can't speak for another company, I'm afraid. So, yes, and a very nice solid mahogany glue holder. <laughs> That's cool, doesn't it? Yes. Do you have a little smoking jacket to wear whilst you're that's modelling with a nice bit of mahogany or a nice bit of tweed with that one? That's what, nice. that's what I like. Get, get suited and booted up. Suited and booted for your modelling, definitely. Sat, now, I like sat, a little bit sat, of mahogany, section. I must admit. That was the best <laughs> thing that ever came out of those testers airbrushes because I had the mahogany box yes with all the color cups and the glass bits and all the nozzles in the holes and I only bought it because it came in a mahogany box. I brass hinges well. is the best yeah. thing about it. the airbrush is crap you'll say the airbrush is crap but the presentation the presentation points for presentation yeah. it looked beautiful but yeah the actual what was inside it was rubbish in yeah. fact i threw away the airbrush but i kept the box for years and years and years but it was a bit like niche because nothing else fits in it yeah <laughs> yeah there could have been a bit more thing and put like a felt or foam Yes, liner in it so in you it. could so you could use yeah. it for other things that would have been far more practical yeah so yeah. yes definitely oh. anyway i think we'll leave it there we've got all the stuff i've got your video for you as always sorry guys you haven't even on the screen are you sorry uh i'll get the uh the video for you it's coming up with obviously of your great work i did do it a little bit earlier today to be honest so i know some of you put up some builds which i've seen since i'll make sure they're on next week ones because there's a couple of really nice ones that you guys put up this afternoon but unfortunately i did the video for it first thing this morning so um we're a little bit ahead of ourselves there so if you don't see your video don't panic you'll be up next week i know where we are to those ones and show so are we all done then guys yep that's it yep. we will see you tomorrow night are you around andy have you got a hot date what was that no i'll be around yeah all oh, right is that his phone going yeah the sky sky or bbc or something or oh, that's because he's just starting his speech again all oh, right yeah. five o'clock in there <laughs> so yes anyway thank you very much for joining us all this week it's been an absolute pleasure as always we will see you obviously if you're going to join us on saturday if not we'll be back with you for monday as always for another fun week in the lockdown for week six yeah we're all going mad with it all <laughs> anyway we'll see you soon wave goodbye everybody we'll see you later bye, -bye. bye. oh no we got to start from the beginning sorry <laughs> I'm wasted my